You think anything is random? Everything's intelligent. So why is it that sometimes you feel joy, and sometimes you feel whatever the other side of joy is? Fear or depression. Sometimes you feel free. Sometimes you feel not free. Cage, hopeless, no way to go, depressed, nothing means anything anyway. Whatever. Why do some things in life, some activities, some people, some thoughts, some emotions, why do some of these bring you in a state of ecstasy? And why do some of these bring you in a state of depression? Deprived of joy. Deprived of feeling connected. There is a reason. It's not random. And I know we'd like to dismiss it because it's too complicated to wrap our minds around. And it simply takes some time to start to understand this. It takes some time to understand what I'm about to speak about. So you may find some reluctance in yourself, which is fine. You can either go or sit in silence or do something for yourself or whatever works for you. Or you can save it for another time <coughs> when you do realize that there is a benefit to being happy. Whether that's spiritually accurate or not, whether that's non-dually accurate or not, you realize that at some point, again, after the seeking has come and gone, there is a value to happiness. There is a real value to joy. Now, we all know, even our scientists, not that they're all the way on the bottom, but still. <laughs> even our scientists, even our Newtonian scientists, I think, realize that everything in the universe works in terms of vibrations, frequencies, rates of cycles, or in short, just vibration or frequency. Everything. Everything has a particular frequency. The wall over there has a particular frequency, which is why it appears as it does, which is why it has the color that it does, da, 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 everything. All the properties of a particular expression of consciousness, or as scientists likes to call it, matter, is because of frequency. This goes for everything. So there is no distinction between outside and inside. So this applies to your mind as well as your emotional. Now the representation of a low frequency, as we know it, would be depression. And you can actually feel it. Even if it's not yourself, you can feel it if you're around people. I can feel it if I'm around people. If there's a, and I don't mind it, it's fine, it's beautiful, and I love it too. So don't feel like you have to manage yourself around me ever. But when you're sitting in a room with somebody that's like really depressed, or really angry, or whatever it is, you all can feel the energetic effects that has on your, whatever, your feel of presence in this physical focus. You can feel it. It's a, it's a low frequency distortion. It's like you're almost standing in front of a bass uh, speaker, you know, in those <laughs> house parties they have. <laughs> but not like a soothing ohm, more like a, almost like radiation. And you feel they're poisoning their body doing so as well. It's just a low frequency energy. It's just out of alignment. Now, when somebody is really joyous, especially when they're joyous and they're letting it be at the same time, but not disengaging from it, calling it anything, accepting and raising the joy, the bliss, the happy passion, but at the same time, letting it be. So that if it changes into something else, that's too, that's good too. That's real joy. The real joy of being able to experience or see joy, or shall we say holistic positivity, even in those circumstances that we've been taught to label negative. That's real joy. When you feel that around somebody, you feel healed. You're healing. Ah, it feels aligned. And this works for yourself internally as well. So the value of joy or the purpose of joy it's almost like that's the only little thing that's been given to us in the physical focus or in the physical embodiment to let us know if we're doing something in alignment or out of alignment. That's its value. It's your only, only compass here. You don't know why, you don't know what, you don't know how. All you know is what you're experiencing right now. And what you're experiencing right now can either resonate, and if it resonates, we could call that an increase in frequency. It's scientific. It's not really woo-woo, unless you want to. To me, it's not woo-woo. The language of it is a bit woo-woo, but I haven't figured out a better way to describe it yet. But the experience I'm conveying is not woo-woo. It's very practical. It's very real. It has very real benefits to your life and those around you and your purpose here. It's more purposeful to me at this point than sitting around and pretending enlightenment is something naked. That has its value too. But if that's drawn out for too long, it starts to become non-resident. Those who seek for many, many years are doing something wrong. Sorry to say that. You're doing something wrong to yourself. You're not doing something wrong that you should be doing right, but you're not listening to yourself. You're not giving yourself enough credit. You're not listening to your inner compass. You're listening to teachers. 
So if I ever become such an obstacle, please, by all means, drop me. Take only what resonates for you. It's very important. I would never want to be an impediment or an example with which you can compare yourself in a negative way. If I form any sort of impediment within your being, in your mind, then don't show up anymore or drop me out of your mind or find an acceptance for it or whatever works. But don't continue along that path. Don't think that I have the truth. You have the truth. There is no one truth. There is moment by moment truth which is tuned into by listening to what brings you happiness, awe, excitement. If you listen to that, then that means that that's the absolute truth in that moment. If that means to light up a cigarette, that means lighting up a cigarette is the absolute truth of the entire universe within you in that moment. Nothing any of the teachers ever said or declared is more truthful in that moment than if you're truly, genuinely, holistically excited about lighting a cigarette. Your only truth is yourself, your inner compass. That's more important than anything I've ever said, say or will say. So if ever I change my mind on this subject, and I say, no, I do have the truth, and you should listen to what I say, then please take my words as I say them now, more to heart than what I'll say then. I don't anticipate that will happen. So again, the misperceived notion of enlightenment, enlightenment equals listening to your heart, listening to your joy, listening to your bliss. <clears throat> the enlightenment you seek, maybe the enlightenment you in particular seek, maybe a very like limited spectrum of consciousness, which may only be called the non-dual states of consciousness. If enlightenment to you is only that at this moment, is only be still and know I'm God, or whatever it is, if only that to you is God and holy and sacred and absolute truth, by all means. However, realize that those states you desire come quicker to you if you listen to your bliss than if you listen to the reasoning of how to get there. If you listen to other teachers, or me, other teachers being everyone, every teacher, outside of yourself, there are no teachers outside of yourself, you ask for that reflection to learn something. Sometimes it is to directly learn whatever they're instructing, but oftentimes it is actually to learn more about yourself to learn more about your own freedom and confidence in the face of their presence and what it triggers for you. That's usually way more important of a teaching than the actual instructions. Now sometimes you come along a teacher and the instructions just do the job for you and that's why you're meant to be there. But often there's an intense emotional connection to your idea of that teacher, right? Maybe not for you, but for many people. That in itself is the teacher what comes up for you in relationship to the teaching and the teacher. And if you're not listening to what resonates for you, if you're not listening to what excites you, what holistically excites you, holistically meaning not as a means to avoid negativity or to sugarcoat the nasty stuff, but holistically exciting. <sighs> yes, that feels right. It feels good. It resonates, which brings you into higher frequency states of consciousness which, in turn, will give you way more immediate access to the states that you idolize so much in, for example, non-duality or Advaita or whatever. So you're actually keeping that away from you by despising the means that I'm now disclosing. You prefer, or you're taught to prefer, to disprove of yourself, to deprive yourself of that joy because it's woo-woo. It's not describing the non-dual state immediately. And yet, it's the quickest means to get there. <clears throat> so that's the irony. Describing the non-dual state and seeking for it keeps it away for a very long time. As long as you believe you're not worthy of it. If you start to follow your bliss, those beliefs cannot stand the light of your excitement. They cannot stand the light of the purity of the connection you feel. When you're in excitement, when you're in resonance with yourself, when you're in joy, when you're in love. All those qualities, all those states of being become immediately accessible through no other means than following the only compass that you have here. So if you're following your intellect when it comes to your spiritual nature, then you're doing something wrong to yourself. You're doing yourself some harm. Which too is beautiful and too sometimes happens for many, many decades. So that the experience of it, the confidence that comes from moving away from that or changing the way you do things can be so profound that you'll never be full again. So even suffering and even doing yourself harm has a purpose and therefore is holistically positive. Everything serves the light 